Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for coming back, I guess, or whatever it is. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Aurora HDR 2019, or specifically, I want to talk about uh, creating an HDR that's over the top. Um, I think when HDR, when I first got into HDR, which is like 10 years ago or something, you know, it was like, oh my God, like go, you know, it goes to 11 kind of thing, like drag the sliders as far as you can to the right. It just go crazy because, oh my God, look what you can do. It's so cool or whatever. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think when you first start HDR, everybody does that because, you know, it is kind of cool. And you're like, holy cow, look what you can do. These are just crazy over the top photos. Um, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people over time sort of taper that off or, or pull it back and just start saying, okay, you know, maybe I like a little bit of edginess, but I want it to be more realistic, or I just want completely, you know, realistic, or whatever it may be. So um, I tend to go back and forth a little bit. I, I definitely have my photos where I'm a little bit edgy, uh, but a lot of my HDRs are, are a little tamer to me, um, and that's in my eye. Your opinion of them may be that they're not tame at all, and that's fine. Um, I'm not trying to define it or whatever. Um, however, you know, um, sometimes <laughs> you come across scenes where you're just like, oh my God, this is going to be an amazing HDR. It's going to be freaking cool as crap. It's going to be like insane, like colors and light and detail and all the stuff that can be impacted in a photo. So um, there's a place like that uh, in London that I try to shoot every time I'm there. And, and I did when I was there earlier this year. Uh, it's called Leak Street or Leaky Street. I'm not sure. It's L-E-A-K-E -E Street. It's about a five minute walk from the London Eye. So it's actually really central, but it's a graffiti tunnel. And there's nothing that screams over the top and HDR like a graffiti tunnel. So um, let me just show you the photos. Um, here's a bracket set. There's the dark, the medium, and the light. Um, and so that's what I started with. And this is what I turned it into. Um, to me, that's really dramatic. I mean, that, you know, it's a graffiti tunnel. I mean, even the ceiling is freaking graffitied. Um, the floor, the walls, you know, you get all kinds of stuff. You get great lines. And uh, so I just went crazy, honestly. And it's fun. Um, and I don't make apologies for it. You know, some people look at it and be like, you know, barf. Um, it's over the top. It's so ugly. It's not realistic. I don't care. Um, it's my photo. And this is what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to go over the top and kind of crazy. And hell, it's a graffiti tunnel. If you're ever going to go push the envelope on, you know, being edgy in terms of colors and details and shit like that, do it on a graffiti tunnel. I mean, it just screams for that. So I did. Let me jump in and show you what I did to the photo, though. Okay, so here's the base HDR, which is, that's the center exposure, and there's the base HDR. Now, the first thing I did is actually crop it uh, and straighten it. It needed to be straightened a little bit, and usually I'll follow one of the, the guideline, uh, one of the built-in aspect ratios for cropping. That's whether it's in Luminar or Aurora. I tend to like them. Um, three to two is what my camera shoots. I, I'll usually stick like that, but I might crop and keep those... Um, uh, that aspect ratio, but I really like 16 by 9, and I tried to do a 16 by 9 here, and I was losing, you know, there's enough here. I like that, uh, the, the whole walkway and that bit of text or whatever it is, that orange stuff in that bottom left corner. I wanted to keep that, and of course the let's dance, you got to have that because that's kind of one of the key parts of the photo. So I ended up doing a free crop, which I don't normally do, so that's how I got to this crop. Uh, now the first thing I did was going to the basic uh, Pam, actually, you know what? That's not true. The very first thing I did is I went straight to HDR Enhance and I just jacked up the detail. I went like that because, again, I'm going over the top and I don't care. No apologies. It's just fun. So literally, look at what I did. HDR Clarity, 100. HDR Smart Structure, 100. Um, and then I even added some HDR Microstructure, which uh, I'm not sure, but I'm very close to being positive that I've never used those sliders, uh, the microstructure um, in any of my HDRs in the previous versions. So the point was I was just jacking up the detail and I went from that, I'm sorry, from that, which is already, I mean, just the subject matter alone, you, you know, you're just looking at it and saying, and that's going to be kind of crazy. I just said, hell with it. I'm just jacking up the detail. So I did. So that was the first thing I did. And then I came to HDR basic and got it looking like that. And so here you can see I just cooled off the temperature a little bit, added some contrast and smart tone and took uh, down the shadows a little bit. I love playing with light uh, in my photos, whether it's in HDR or not. So already, you know, I started with that as a center exposure and I'm already there. So it's, it's kind of grunt, not kind of, it is grungy. 
I mean, there's, you know, paint, there's gum, there's trash, there's all kinds of crap in this photo. Um, and I, I love it, to be honest. I just freaking love this kind of stuff. It's so fun to shoot because you can just drag all the sliders to the right and you don't have to make any apologies for it. It's not, oh, I don't know what I'm doing or, you know, uh, my editing is way off or whatever. It's just the hell with it. It's a graffiti tunnel and I'm going to just kill it. So um, I was killing it. Um, anyway, so I did that. Uh, and then I went to the color slider. Uh, or filter, and I just gave it a little bit of vibrance and color uh, contrast. I don't know if you can even tell. There's the before, and the I'm having trouble telling, to be honest, but it gives it a little pop of color, and I'm pretty much all about the color um, and, the, and the detail in this one, but um, I just think it was uh, something I wanted to do. So I popped that a little bit. Uh, and then I went over here to LUT mapping, and I don't use LUTs a lot. Um, it's cool, it, it can be interesting, but the thing I like about LUTs is that um, uh, even though I don't really very often find LUTs that I like on my photos, but sometimes I find one and I like it a lot. Um, and in this case, the glorious LUT that's built into Aurora 2019 gave it a nice kind of bluer tint, which I liked a lot. So I used glorious, but I backed it down to 80 because at 100 it was getting a little too blue. And you know, there's a lot of red and yellow and that kind of stuff in here. And then the lights are kind of warm as well. So I wanted to back away from some of those warmer colors because I like to play up the blue. And, you know, there's there's good color contrast here. You got a lot of like around the Let's Dance, you got the yellow and the red. And, you know, in this unicorn uh, that's smoking a joint, I guess, uh, whatever the hell. Uh, th there's some oranges and reds and yellows and stuff. And then there's blues too. So I like the color contrast, but I thought the glorious LUT really helps. So that was a uh, that was a nice thing to do there, um, I think, for helping the image. Um, and then really, it was just a couple of more things. Um, I went to Image Radiance, and that actually will mask some of the detail. It adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit of that romantic glow. And so even though I'm sitting here and saying, hey, I'm jacking it up, and I'm going over the top, and I'm going crazy and all that stuff, I dial it back just a little bit with that Image Radiance. Uh, I mean, it's 23, so it's not even that much, but it just helps tone it down a little bit. And as much as I like to push the envelope in this kind of photo, I also want to just keep, you know, a little bit of a, a tug on the reins, if you will. So um, that's what I did. Um, and then the last two things were just dodge and burn and vignette. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show those in, in reverse order. Um, I went to vignette because... Um, the thing about HDR, so let me back up. The thing about HDR, and, and I think the reason people like it so much is because you get a, you can uh, at least get an even distribution of light. Uh, that is, you know, you you tame the highlights and you, and you brighten the shadows, and you end up with a, a photo that's got a distribution of light across it that's pretty even a lot of times, and that's often the goal with HDR is to have that even distribution of light. Um, and when I first started, I was like, dude, I can see everything. This is amazing. Um, over time, you know, all these years of creating HDRs, I've gotten to where I think shadow is your friend. Um, I think it's expected visually by your viewer, and I actually think it helps a photo. Now, it depends on the photo, and you could get away with just going completely over the top uh, in terms of perfect distribution of light here, and nobody would care, and who cares if they do uh, care or not, I guess. But um, nonetheless, I wanted to pull back a little bit of that. So I added some vignette. That's obviously mostly around the edges, and so it's, it's pretty high at negative 84. Uh, size was 52, so that's not real tight, but it's adding back a little bit of shadow. Uh, but then I went to Dodge and Burn, and let me show you what I did there, and there's the difference. And so I, I'm sure you can tell. Let me show you again. There's the before, and there's the after. And so what I did, and the thing I love about Dodge and Burn is once you click on Start Painting, you have Lighten or Darken, and then you can just pick the strength. Um, but you can do this multiple times on this same layer. So it's it's the one filter in Aurora that doesn't require you to add new layers to customize adjustments. Everything else you have to add, add a new layer because there's no filter masking. Unlike in Luminar, you can just use multiple filters all in the same layer without uh, with all kinds of custom adjustments and you just mask it in. You can't do that in Aurora except with Dodge and Burn. So I just came in here and I just started darkening some things. I want a little darker in the corners. Um, I wanted to lighten this right here because this orange text, and I'm trying to read what it says. I don't know, I can't tell, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that draws my eye and it's orange so it stands out against that black um, side or street. So I wanted to pop that a little bit. And so let me show you again the before and after with Dodge and Burn. There's the before, that area is a lot darker and the after, right? So I also lit up some other things. If you look, 
It's kind of around the edges. I went a little darker. Let's dance. I went a little bit brighter. I went a little brighter in here. Uh, and that's the beauty. You just take the dodge and burn. You just click on start painting and you just start messing around until you get what you like. And that's how I ended up with that. Um, now that I'm all done with it, I actually might would go back to image radiance and add a little bit more. because that's going to give me a little bit more shadow and a little bit more sort of that dramatic look. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to dodge and burn and this will just illustrate my point. And I'm at light and 35. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually take that to 50, you know, let's say 50 and I'm going to lighten some of this a little bit more. And I want to lighten up here a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to go more than 50. That's not quite enough. I'm going to say, all right, so 65, let's do that. So just lighten some of that and lighten some of that. And this is how I do it. it this is not a custom specific, really detailed masking job. This is just kind of slapping it on, slapping it on there. But um, after doing the dodge and burn of the vignette the first time, and then wanting to add more image radiance, that basically adds shadow and kind of that romantic glow that works really well on sunsets and blue hours uh, and that sort of thing, even night shots. But in here, you know, it is creating a little bit more darkness. So I'm using dodge and burn to bring back some light in the areas that I want it. So that's all it is. It's a delicate dance between light and dark, you know, um, and same with details or lack of details and same with color, saturation. Everything's kind of a delicate dance. Uh, in any photo uh, and with any kind of editing uh, and frankly in any software, you know, whether you're using Lightroom or Photoshop or On One or Topaz or, uh, you know, Luminar Aurora. Um, it's always a dance between, you know, pushing one thing and it maybe it impacts something else. And so there's a lot of that in my editing where I'm going back and forth between things until I get them just right. Uh, but I think now I'm at the point where I pretty much think I have it about just the way I want it. So. There's the single middle exposure, and there's the fully edited HDR, kind of over the top, high detail, high color, high contrast, but yet, you know, some realism because, I mean, this is a covered tunnel underneath like some trains or whatever. I think Waterloo Station is down that way out, out of frame to the right about a mile, and I'm pretty sure it goes over here. Um, and, uh, you know, the tracks go over here. So this is just a pass through to get under the train tracks and it's just a public graffiti area. So if you're in London, go check it out. Again, it's Leak Street or Leaky, L-E-A-K-E. -E. It's about a five minute walk from the London Eye. It's super freaking fun. I've been probably five or six times. Every time the graffiti is different and it's just a lot of fun. So um, that's it, my friends. One more time, there's before. Again, that's the single exposure from the bracket set. And there's my dramatic, kind of over the top, highly detailed and colorful HDR. And it's a lot of fun. Sometimes. You just got to go to 11, right? So thanks for watching, my friends. I hope it helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, like, share, tell your friends. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great one, and we'll talk soon. Have a great one. Take care. Adios.